Welcome to your presentation for USALI Income Statements, otherwise known as Uniform System of Accounts for the Lodging Industry. Hotels use this to make sure that there is uniformity, consistency from year to year for their own hotels, but also so that they can compare themselves historically to themselves, use it in budgeting, compare themselves to the competition, and to also compare themselves to industry standards, which are all developed using USALI. So the first thing that you will see at the top of a USALI operating statement will be your average daily rate, your occupancy, and your revenue per available room. These are three KPIs or key performance indicators that you need to know going into completing an income statement using USALI. In general, to prepare an income statement, you, need, you have to go through three steps. You have to identify the accounting period. So are you looking at a month's worth of revenues and expenses? Are you looking at a quarter? Are you looking at a year? So you have to identify the accounting period. You then need to document all your revenues and all your expenses. Those are the first three steps you need to do. Now, you need to document your revenue expenses based on that accounting period. And that's why we always start with that. That way we have a guide as to which revenue and which expenses we want to look at. Now, remember in lodging industries or hotels, there are three different types of statements that work together. The first are the departmental schedules. The department schedules outline the revenues and expenses for each profit center. You then require this information to build your summary operating statement, which is used primarily by managers, which then you use this information to develop your statement of income, which is used mostly by owners and investors. So let's start with the departmental schedule. There's typically one per profit center. So a profit center is an area, a different department in a hotel that provides revenue. You'll sometimes see non-profit generating departments as well have a departmental schedule. They won't have any revenue, only expenses. Something like the administration and general section, your department and your hotel. The administration department does not provide any revenue. Your sales and marketing team, they don't have revenue that they bring in. What they do is they bring in revenues for the rooms department, for food and beverage, for let's say a spa, for a golf course within the hotel, okay? but they don't have any revenue. So sometimes you'll have a non-profit generating department as well. Okay? But what a departmental schedule does is it outlines all revenue streams for that department. For a rooms department, you may see them break it down by let's say your segments. So you might see it for the transit segment sales, your corporate sales, your group sales, and then a total revenues for that department. That allows the rooms department to know where their sales are coming from. Okay? For a food and beverage, you may see it broken down in the same way as a USAR income saving, Uniform System of Accounts for Restaurants. Then you'll see expenses from that department in a departmental schedule. So those are mostly controllable expenses for that department, things that they can control, their labor, um, linen for a rooms department, food and beverage for a, a food and beverage department. Okay? Um, and then you'll find your departmental income or loss when you take away these expenses from the revenue. So revenue minus expenses, but only those that are directly related to that department will give you your departmental income or loss. So why do we break it down this way first? It gives us more in-depth information so we can actually break it down by segment, like I said, for the rooms. Uh, it gives us a deeper understanding of where the revenues are coming from for that department. Okay? Budgeting purposes, we can now use that information for that department to budget their following year for that department. And then lastly, accountability. By looking at a summary operating statement, which we will shortly, 
we only see total rooms revenue, we only see total rooms expenses, we only see total food and beverage revenue, we only see total food and beverage expenses, we don't really know how it's broken down. This way we can have direct accountability to what went wrong for that department. So by following the departmental schedule first, we really get a deeper understanding of what's going on in that department. So again, we're looking at your revenues, all revenue streams for a specific department, minus your payroll and benefits, so labor costs for that department, that's a very big controllable expense, right? Minus other expenses for that department, and then that'll give you your departmental income or loss. Now remember, food and beverage department costs will appear before payroll, normally in a food and beverage departmental schedule. Okay, it will be outlined just like in USAR. With that information, you can then develop your USALI summary operating statement. Okay. It shows you your revenues, your cost of sales, and all, the, all other expenses related to hotel operations. So it's going to give you more information about property level for property level managers than a statement of income. So it will really break it down for your managers, your operating managers, so that they understand what's going on within their hotel. They can, it'll provide them more information so they can move forward and operate their hotel more efficiently. Okay. So we're gonna go through each section together. First, the operating department income. Broken down by departments for both operating revenues and departmental expenses Okay, for this section. So we start by breaking down all the revenues So from all your departments. So rooms, food and beverage, uh, you might have spa, you might have other revenues as well. Okay, You will first list all the revenues for all departments Find out to find out your total revenues for the entire hotel. Right after that you will see your departmental expenses broken down in the same order as the revenues. Okay? And all the data comes from departmental schedules. Next, you'll find your undistributed operating expenses. Okay, So these are expenses that can't be assigned to one specific department. Security for the hotel, transportation for the hotel, franchise fees, uh, your administration team, your marketing and sales. Okay, You can't really tell one department that they're going to take on this amount of expenses because it'll be too hard to really do it properly. So they're undistributed operating expenses for the hotel that are necessary to operate, but they weren't directly related to any of those, uh, those profit centers. We'll also see management fees on a summary operating statement often. Okay? So that would be for management contracts and hotels. It's typically a percentage of total revenues is how you pay for your management contract fee. Okay. Then you would have your non-operating expenses. So costs that are not related to the operations of the hotel. Your rent, your property taxes, your insurance. You need to pay rent, you need to pay your property rent taxes and your insurance, but they're not directly related to operations. Okay. Another line we would see as well would be replacement reserve. This is money that's set aside for FF&E. Okay? Funny to say, FF&E, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Okay? Hotels will often have a replacement reserve because as they need to continue to replace their FF&E, they need to have money set aside. They can't just hope that they'll continue to have enough money. This way it's for savings for themselves so that they're prepared to replace their ff &E. So again, a summary operating statement, which you can find on page 71, lists all your operating revenues for all departments, minus all the departmental expenses and undistributed expenses to find out your gross operating profit, your GOP. From that, you'll take away your management fees to find out your income before non-operating income and expenses, and then take away your non-operating expenses, so your property taxes, bank charges, insurance, anything like that, to find out your EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Finally, we'll take away our replacement reserve to find our EBITDA less replacement reserve. So we won't see 
our interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization on the summary operating statement. That's more of something that an owner or a higher level CEO or an investor may want to see. Then we get to the Useli Statement of Income. A statement of income will show all the revenues and then a subtotals for revenues and then it will show all the expenses and a subtotal for expenses. Other than those two subtotals, you will not see any more like we saw for your summary operating statement where we find our gross operating profit or income before or earnings or EBITDA. It will just be all revenues, all expenses with two subtotals. Okay. It does include, remember EBITDA on our summary operating statement, it did not include our interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Our statement of income does. Okay, so that's for your higher level managers to see. Owners love to look at this. Higher level managers like to look at this. And investors like to look at this to see what the real cash flow is, what's really happening once you take away the interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization for the company. Okay. So you'll see all your operating revenues Depart all departments are listed, followed by the subtotal, minus all expenses, all lines with no subtotals. And remember, that includes your amortization, that includes your depreciation. Okay? From that, you'll find out your income or loss before income taxes. So because we've added depreciation and amortization, this will typically be a lower number than on your summary operating statement. From that number, we'll calculate our income taxes and take them away. If this is a loss on this line, we do not pay income taxes. And then from that, we'll find out our net income for the hotel. So that is how all three statements are put together, developed using USALI, and how they are all connected.